Hi, welcome back to the Craig's World. My name's Craig. Welcome to what is my madness. I know my beard's getting a bit long again now. Right, today the little video is I have a, as you know, Bonnie, the white Mercedes Vito. Um, one of the drivers have come back today saying that it's gone in limp mode and the engine light is on. So I'm going to show you how to sort this out. I know what it is. With the Vitos, it's always, always the EGR valve. And it's just probably got a lot of shit and gunk in it. So I'm going to clean it all out today. I'm going to show you the procedure and how to do it. A gentleman showed me years ago how to take the EGR valve off a Vito. So simply. I've seen people smashing these to bits because they can't get them off. And it, I'll, I'll show you how I do it. And it just pops straight. A couple of bits, it should pop straight off. I'll turn this around and I'll show you what the problem is with the dash. Right, first things first with this is we have to take this complete air box off. It's just going to be so simple because it's buried at the back. Um, so it's a very, this one's pretty easy for the bonnet. First of all, this is the oil filler cap. Now, I screwed it in to the side because it was, it was broken. Normally, as you can see, it's like a chamfered edge. That just pushes in to the rolls you do. Lift it up. Just put it to one side, forget about that for now. And with this off, like I say, you'll be able to see a, a lot better of where the EGR is. There's only a couple of clips, it's not, I wouldn't say this was particularly hard to be fair, just a little bit of time consuming. Move out of the way. Just be careful behind here you do have a <coughs> a uh, plug for the sensor. Which you can see there, which it is only two little clips like that and it should pop straight off. He says. Thing, as I say, I don't like is to pull people pull on the wires and then wonder why sensors don't work. <coughs> and then this literally just should pull straight off. Just pops off from the off then pulls out to that. Now, that gives us a lot more room for what we need. And before we go any further, I'll show you. Right, okay guys, so this is my little trick that I got shown years ago how to take this EGR valve off. Now, I'm going to show it you this way because when I start doing, stripping it, it's going to be hard for me to show you. Now... I use a big, big Allen key, and just behind here, as you can see there, there's a little groove, tiny little groove. And you might see I rest it on there. So I, all that I do, is rest it like that. I'll put it out a bit. So it's rested on. When I'm gonna do it, I'll hold there where my thumb is, and you hit this with the hammer, only only slightly, and what happens is it's like a lever, it goes push, and it gives it that, it pops it up. I have seen people smash these to smithereens because they can't do this. 
and it is literally as simple as putting a little bar there like that or you can even put it behind it if you wish you can even put it there if you want but I just put it behind it there and give it a tap and it just goes pop straight off What we do have to do this here is the EGR valve and this has got to come off. So you've got one there, a start and one there. And there is this clip which only just pushes at the top and it'll pull, pull down. <coughs> so I'm just going to undo these star bolts and then I'll show you my procedure of how I get this off. And basically, is it here? Yeah, it's here. disconnected I think disconnecting these little pipes this one is probably one of the hardest bits to do which is just undoing these little two bolts once you crack them off obviously you can get them better with a little bar So this one is the the awkward one, unfortunately. But the beautiful thing about this is I can do that, so it'll go around any <coughs> any obstruction. This is the hardest, like I said, the hardest one at the back. But it's not a big thing, it's just awkward. And when I like to take these out, so you don't drop them, that's how I take them out. So even with the bolt on top where you undo it, I then try and put me and I pull out in one because then that way you're not going to drop the bolt. I don't have to worry about which way around these bolts go because there's only two of them and they're identical. Same again, put your finger on it, 
straight out. So there's nothing now holding that EGR on. It's been unclipped. It's it's ready now to just be hit be a little hammer. And hopefully it should pop off. I have to go and find my persuader. Now, as I mentioned to you before, this is where a lot of people have trouble trying to get that off. And I've seen them with crowbars, I've seen them with all kinds trying to get it, and they actually damage it, gain it off. And that little lug I've just showed you, like I said, I'm going to hit it right there. So that bar's now in. i just give it a gentle tap. Just a couple of taps, that's all it took. And it isn't an awkward bit. There we go. There is the EGR valve off the vehicle. So we'll go on the bench and we'll show you how to clean up and how it works. Okay, so we're back on the bench at the minute. Now, this shows you how dirty, if you can if you can see inside of that, how clogged up it is. And even on the top, because this has to go up and down and it, it's, it's not. So, you could go and buy a new one. You know me, last time I did this was about two or so years ago. And it solves the problem for about two years. Now, I have to show you this because the same again, a lot of people, if they're doing it this way and they, do, they don't do this part in a bit of trouble. There's a tiny little rubber O-ring right there. If you can see it. And this is what keeps it to the van so nothing can escape. Be very careful with this. I don't want to start cleaning it with that on because I don't want to damage it. So I'll just put that to one side. Don't lose it. Just put it to one side. Now, now we can clean all this up. Um, dead simple. Clutch and brake cleaner. That's all we have to do. And if you remember when I talk, when we go to car, the Bershka car boot, and I know it's opening. Uh, next month which I can't wait because in the in my stores I get a lot over the winter period so that allows me to carry on working and doing all my other little bits that I do now So, I get, you get packs of these, loads of them in a pack, <coughs> for about a pound. And the, the useless, and I mean absolutely useless for painting, because the brushes are too hard. You need soft brushes for that. But in the workshop, perfectly ideal. There's other ways where you can, I've seen what I do, where you put masking tape around these to make it so it's a very hard bristle to get into the bit you need. But this will take a majority of it off. We're just going to help it. And don't spray any word else. Apart from on the valve itself. This stuff literally starts melting it away. This one is bad actually. Give it a little soak. And... You get packs of them as well for a couple of, well, less than a quid. And I always keep them in. Because you never know when you need them. And I'll just give it, because this isn't, I know it's abrasive, but it's not totally abrasive. It's not like, how can I put that? 
it's not like sandpaper abrasive. It'll get the job done. You'll get it. You'll get it clean. But I'm on, this is only the outer part. This is what goes back in. It's not this, which is your valve. It's at the front. And if, the more I put on it, the more it can start working its little magic and getting it all loose. And don't be afraid if you have to use like a Stanley knife. Not to dig in, but to just give it a surface, just a little key, just so it'll all flake off. Don't be afraid to do that. But like I said, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds getting a new EGR valve when I know this, does, this will do the trick. And this is just residue from your being a diesel. Very careful with this top part. So this will be the problem where it can't, this valve either can't shut or can't open. That's what that, we'll put the light on and put it into limp mode. You can get these blocked off. To be fair, but blocking an EGR valve off causes more problems, if that's right, then it solves. that's what this is for just to get to break up anything we can't get So this is where you take that little rubber grommet off, that little rubber uh, uh, ring off, because then you're not going to damage it. Right, now we need the valve to open. Now I need to test if it opens, and you can do this without without even putting it onto the to the um, van. To be fair, I forget how I did it last time. That's that. That's right. Because this little plastic cover holds the little mechanism. And be very gentle doing it. There you go. It just pops off, and as you can see, all in there. And what happens is when that pushes, see the valve open now, if you can see. You can see through there. And when it closes, Right, I can close it and it closes. And that, needs, that needs a little WD. So 
and this is why you always check this part as well there we go as you can see now it's it's working working as it should running freely now There we go. I need to replace the cap one second. Just to replace the cap. It has nothing in the top. Most importantly, don't forget that. Don't forget that. There you go, right. So there's one now cleaned out EGR valve. So we'll put it back on the vehicle. Let's see where we go from there. Okay, so that is where the EGR has come off. <coughs> there's our cleaned EGR valve now. So it's just in the reverse process. So don't forget, it's only just two bolts. So I'm gonna put you back on this stand. And once I bolt this in, we'll clip it up and I will go from there. There's a little game of Jenga going it round all the pieces to get it back in. In reverse order, do the same trick, put it like that when you're putting it in, and then you can tighten this and it'll get its first, its first lock of the nut, sorry, of the bolt. First one in. Same procedure. Hold. This one's a bit more of like a Masonic dance than anything. There you go. 
they're just finger tape for now. There's one. There's a pipe on top of it which makes it really awkward. You, sorry. That's that completely down. Now, don't forget, we do have two clips. We've got one here. And we've got the one on the EGR itself. So we've clipped that in now. That's it. And then it's just as simple now to put all the airbox back together. All you just need to remember Is that sorry it's on the on the top one so put these clamps clips over them and in that little hole right there, there and then press and that's your airbox in You can change your air, filter, your air filter if you wish, but I know it's a, I did a service on it not so long ago and it's not that dirty. Now this is where this little clip comes in. Clop. They are down. And don't forget our little budge. I don't like to budge things, I really don't, but there's sometimes when if I, if I find one in a scrapyard, I'll get it. But it's not doing any harm. The one little but one little screw on the top of it. Like thusly. Plumb the air back in. Okay, let me put all these 
two of the cover workbench. Just double check in, that's plugged in, that's on, that's in, that's on, that's on, that's clipped, that's clipped, that's on. Okay, let's see if this works. Out of gear. And there you go, straight off. So I know it's, um, all the power's back, I know everything's perfect. So that's how you fix your engine light on a Mercedes Vito or any Mercedes it's exactly the same they're all the same so you don't need to go to a garage you don't need to spend a fortune on EGR valves that took that generally takes about 25 30 minutes um, and it's just my time I bought you could replace it if you want you could put a new one on it depends on how you are but I know that'll be good for another hundred thousand miles now so thank you for watching guys stay safe and I'll see you on the next one.